Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Maximus. This is video two, and today we're talking about the compression graph. So we're going to be picking off where we left off from the last video, and we're going to be talking about this graph right here, because one of the first things we want to do, like in the last video, is set where our bands are going to be, because once we set that, now we can go and interact specifically with each band and adjust them accordingly. So if we look at this graph, and it, it might be kind of confusing if maybe this is the first time you've seen it, or maybe you just are kind of unfamiliar with it. So this is going to take place of your traditional ratio and your threshold knobs. It's basically all this in one graph. So for example, let's look at the master section here. So this is going to be the green line here. So what do we see? So let's play some signal here and kind of see what's going on here. So when we play something, let's bring this master down a little bit so we can kind of more focus on what we're looking at. Okay, so what we see here is we see the signal coming in. Now this is the master, so this is the whole signal of our song going through here as well. So what's happening is this is the signal going in. As it gets louder, you can see it goes further along here. Now, this graph here, if it's all the way up like this, all the way to the top like that, that means there's no compression happening because as the signal goes in and it gets louder, nothing's happening. There's no compression happening. And that's because this right here is going to be determining how much you're going to be compressing. So this is going to be your ratio. So basically, if you had it like this, it's going to be limited. And that means that if there's signal that gets past this point here, it can't go any louder. It's limited to this range right here. Now, the threshold is basically how far in the signal do you want it to go for, for us to have an effect? And that's where this vertical knob comes in handy. So an example for this here. So our signal is not even loud enough to get limited right here. It's not even making it to this section here. It's basically kind of living in this spot here. So what we can do is this pre knob here, this is going to be the gain that happens before our compression happens. So we're increasing the volume of our signal before it gets into this compressor. And check, take a look at what happens here. So right there we have limiting happening. It can't go any louder because this is basically telling it to stop. It's that brick wall kind of thing. We're saying you cannot go louder than what I specify right here. And if we look in the monitor section here, we can see that happening. So let's bring our pre back to normal. So we have no limiting or compression happening because it can't even make it over here yet. And as we increase this pre knob here, It can't go any further than this right here. So this is a hard, hard, hard limiting here. So it's literally chopping a lot of that stuff off. And we can see that reflected in that graph as well. Now it sounds horrible, but this is kind of the concept that we should really drill into our heads is seeing what's happening here. Now, if you're kind of unfamiliar with this and you want to spend some time with it, I highly recommend you do. However, there is a little maybe work around here. So in this drop down menu here, you can click this and under these presets here, you can choose different types of presets here. So if you're familiar with maybe a two to one ratio or something like that, a four to one, eight to one, you know, generally for low end stuff for bass, I always kind of go with the eight to one. We can click on this here. So let's go to an eight to one here. Now we can see what this does to the graph here. And as we go for different presets here, let's go to maybe a two to one, something kind of soft here. So we can kind of see what's happening. So as the signal kind of passes this, this diagonal line and starts going into this compression here, let's take a listen to see what that sounds like. So we can tell it's compressing because it's deviating from this diagonal line. Now, if it was up like this, the signal is just how it was before. And as soon as we drag this down, we can start to see a little compression happening here as well. And there's a lot more presets here that you can play around with. And it's kind of good to know to kind of use these and look at what's happening to this graph and see how that's being affected. Like four to one, for example, is a little bit harsher than two to one. And one point to drive home as well is this pre knob is going to be very, very important, especially for different bands and stuff like that, because you really want to make sure you have a healthy signal going into the compressor so the compressor can work the best that it can. If you have something that's too loud, you might want to turn it down or if something's too quiet, you might want to work on this pre knob and kind of bring it up a little bit to a usable range where we can actually start using compression. So another interesting thing that we should talk about for this graph is the expansion. Let's go back to our default stage here and it does default to a limiter here. So let's grab this knob here or this node and bring it, bring it all the way up to the top. And a good way to look at this is let's look at our low end and do the same thing here. So as we talked about before, this diagonal line means there's no compression happening. It's just going through the compressor and nothing's happening, right? 
So let's say there's some quieter stuff in the signal and we want to bring that up. We want to expand the, the quieter stuff and make that a little bit louder. So the way we do this is a simple way. It's like this. Let's listen to our signal here and solo this. Let's bring back up our master. So we have our low end going here, right? And this is our signal that we see here. Now, if this is a straight line, nothing's happening. However, if we grab this tension up here and bring this up, that gigantic move, what's happening there? So as signal's going in, this line is telling it to bring that up. It's telling it to bring it louder. And that's the type of expansion stuff that you that you can do in uh, in Maximus. Now let's alt click this back to normal. And that's how it's going to sound originally. And then bring it up a little bit more here. And there we go right there. And another interesting thing to think about as well. So let's go to our mid right here and talk about some of this mid going on here. So for our middle, it brings back up to the top. So we have no compression compression happening on our mid range. So on our mid range here, what we can do is let's take a listen. Now let's say there's some stuff maybe down here that's a little too quiet that we don't really want in our signal. We can always right click a little spot here and bring this down. Now anything below the signal is not gonna make it in here and we can see this as we drag this to the right. Now what we're doing right there is making a gate because as we remember before, if we deleted this, the signal going in here this is the volume as it goes louder it gets further up here along this kind of triangular line here looking at this right here now as we expanded that before on our low end by bringing this up here bringing that louder what we can do is on that mid band like i was showing you we can drop a node somewhere down here and we can drag this down and anything that's below this node in volume is not going to make it if it's all the way to the bottom so these peaks that kind of happen right here we can do this here So that's the only thing that's going to be making into the signal. So we can see that the snare is louder than most of the things inside this band right here or inside this, the signal itself. So with this technique, uh, Maximus isn't necessarily just for mastering. You can definitely use it as a gate and then play around with the attack and the release to have a really clean signal. You know, let's say you have just a regular snare drum going and there's a lot of ambience. There's a lot of other drum stuff happening and you can use a gate in this manner and really dial it in with this graph and make it very customized. Because as you know, with FL Studio, there's a lot of functionality as far as the line goes. As we can right click these nodes, we have all the options that we have here that we would have for automation or in Citrus or stuff like that in different kinds of lines, that's how we can really go and define a certain type of curve that we want. So let's say, for example, we want to do the same thing. We want to eliminate a little bit of this lower end signal, but also bring up the stuff right after that before it really starts to go into the compression. So we'd right click here, we bring a node here and we drag this down because we don't want any of the signal. And we can put another node here and we can start to bring this up a little bit like this, or maybe put the node like that. So what we see here, it's going to be gating this section here. And then after that, it's going to be boosting exactly what we gate right after what we gated. Or we can turn the tension handle in so it kind of turns it down a little bit before it really starts to kick in. And this is really the power of Maximus and how this graph works. So while you don't have the traditional ratio and threshold knobs, you can use these presets that I mentioned here, but also you can go into this graph and really define what you want your sound to do in each specific band. So that's the really cool, cool part about using an interactive graph like this. It's very helpful and it's probably one of the most important aspects of Maximus that you should really drill home. The attack and release stuff, that's kind of basic, and we're going to talk about that as well, but with this specific compressor here, this is kind of the most thing that you really want to understand, and you should spend your most time in, so make sure to play around with this a little bit and kind of make some crazy curves, but understand what we're doing here. So let's delete some of these notes again here, and delete that here, and as a recap before we go into our next segment here, this line here, if it's always diagonal from left to right, there's going to be nothing happening. Signal is going to be going in and going out. There's no compression, no limiting, no gating, no expansion, none of that happening until we start to tell our signal what to do based on what we do in this graph. 
So like I said, when we limit something, let's go back to our master and kind of look at this. When we limit something, we're literally dragging this node here and bringing it flat because it cannot pass this line. That's going to be where it gets into the limiter territory here. And as we bring it up here, this is going to be more so compression. And like I said, you can always go to the presets and dial in what you want specifically. So based upon your signal, you can really change what you want to have in there, you know? So that's kind of the main thing to drive home. So definitely spend some time with this graph and kind of learn it inside and out because this is going to be your main, I guess, interface between what you want your song to sound like. It depends on how you're going to key in this graph here. And yeah, in the next video, we're gonna kind of be diving into more of the standard kind of stuff of the compression and what we can do. But for now, this little thing down here that I wanted to mention here before we end the video, we have a couple options here, so it's pretty self-explanatory. This is going to be on for the low end. This is going to be the compressor off. However, we do still have access to our posts and some threshold stuff here. As we can see, the different knobs gray out and gray in. So that's how, kind of how we can see what's going on here. Then we can go to muted if we would just want to mute that band in general. So here's on. And then muted is obviously going to mute it. And then we have off entirely. So I thought I'd mention that here. And then the last, very last thing that I wanted to show you is this knob here and this is this is going to come very very in handy this is one of your also your most important knobs if you're doing any type of mastering thing so if we have a low end kind of thing going on here and we're listening to our speakers to our headphones referencing in different types of areas this is important because with our low end we don't really want a stereo low end because that's going to wash out a lot of that low end you want it focused in almost basically as much in the center as you can without sacrificing your sound and that's gonna give a very solid low end. So what we wanna do, if we look at this knob and we drag it to the right, it's gonna be merged, and then to the left, it's gonna be separated. So for example, let's listen to our low end and start to merge it, make it a little bit more in the center. Let's bring this up here so we can hear it a little bit more. And take a listen how this sounds here. So something like that might be a little more focused. Now, if we did it separate, which we don't want to do, but this is for an example to see what that sounds like. Now, we're going to separate that too much. We're going to get into phase issues, and especially with low end, if you have a lot of phasing issues, you're basically sacrificing the strong low end of your signal. So highly not advised to separate your low end bands like that. It's more so better to merge them and make them more cohesive with each other. However, on the high stuff, we kind of do want to separate that stuff. We want a wide stereo field, and that's what's cool about having these different kinds of bands. So let's play this, and let's kind of separate the highs here. Now, this is something very noticeable in headphones, and once you apply this to your master and have your mid and your highs kind of... I guess detailed as much as you want them to. It's very noticeable once you toggle off, you AB your compressor on and off, and you can really see how wide this stereo, how wide this track can actually be. And we're gonna go through that through this course and kind of master it as best as we can with Maximus. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.